Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 154. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, we are here for the Amalfi Class B series. We're going to be going around Amalfi Coast, specifically the Rally de Pos Positano. I still fuck it up every single time. Um, we're going to go around this one. We've got three, sorry, four, four stages to do. A, B, C, D, and we're doing them in the backwards configuration this time around. So let's get in the beamer. Yeah, we're at 140 hours on the um on the old timer. It's a good sounding engine. And we got a Ferrari here, very nice. Do you know I I find it funny that the jump between Specifically, the Honda that we were driving a minute ago around here, and this Beamer is unreal. It's only one class, but holy shit, that's a jump. I don't know why, I think this is one of the most beautiful BMWs that's ever existed. The 2009 M5. I, d I don't know whether this is an M5 or whether it's an M3. Um, but that sort of generations, and specifically the, the 09 M5 that came out. That was one of the most beautiful BMWs ever. I love that car to bits. It's a beautiful one. Oh, the Porsche Simp Bosch. Fuck. Great, I've messed up my transmission a little bit. It's not ideal. I mean, to be fair, though, realistically, because the BMW is a manual gearbox most of the time, that is kind of realistic. Um, I think some games, they, they like, expect people when they shift to just go... No one can do that. That's like... I mean, it, it can be done, but no one does that every time they change. Like, you'd lose your arm. Bye bye, arm. Dog. Doge. Whoa, really messed up that line this time. Oh shit! <laughs> oh, no! Went a bit wide there. It's a beautiful interior as well. Honestly, like these BMWs. This was the era that BMW was superior. Mercedes couldn't catch up. Their cars couldn't look as good as this. Porsche. Like BMWs. This was the era for BMWs. And now, modern day BMWs, ever since. I want to say 2018. Maybe even earlier than that. It's horrible. It's just not great. I think the last good looking BMW was that M3 GTR that they made. That like... I, I'm not even sure. It was an M3 or an M4. But it was a GTR. 
and it had like orange accent on it. I think that was the last BMW that actually, you know, looked like a BMW that was good. BMW's just fallen victim to this futurizing trend where they make these cars look futuristic and it's not nice. Set sail from where we was begun. While we wait, while we wait. Oh, Jesus. That's the only BMW that's actually come out that looks good recently. It's the only BMW that I've seen that looks semi-decent. Stretching. Ah, oh, cute bugger. You can't forget our future plans. Do you know what I might try and do? I might try and install Horizon 5 on my Steam Deck and see how well it runs. Alright, not bad. Slaving Ghost, please don't turn off your console. Nice. I can't believe how much faster I am than the Elise. I thought that thing would have destroyed my ass, but apparently not. Apparently not. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was loud. Um, yeah, Motorsport 4. I, I was looking. So there was a... Um, I found a version of Motorsport 4 that I had never seen. Um, it was in CEX in Cardiff. Um, had a look. And I was like, huh. The new version of Motorsport 4. I didn't buy it. Because I wasn't 100% sure. Obviously, I have data. So I was like, ah, what's, it, what's this version of Motorsport 4? And it turns out it's just literally the first disc of Motorsport 4. Um, so they... I don't know why, but they did two versions of Motorsport 4. One that had the second disc that meant you had the full game. And one that only had one disc, which basically came with like free play uh, and all that stuff. Basically, it, it was it was strange. Because, yeah, it, it didn't come with the full thing. Um, which sucks. Yeah, I suppose if it was cheaper, that was probably a better idea. For people who maybe just wanted to mess about in Forza. But at the same time, like, I don't know. Seems a bit strange. <clears throat> I will be honest though, I'm so glad that 100 gigabyte discs exist now. Because I, I believe Red Dead Redemption 2 on the Xbox One were on 50 gigabyte Blu-rays. Which is the sole reason why there's two in that. Um, but yeah, when it... Uh, no, it wasn't a prologue deal. Um, it was it was the full game. But it just only had the first disc. So if... The thing is, no matter what version you bought, if you put in the first disc of Motorsport, you could basically just run the disc, but... 
Death Ray with the t with the Prime sub. Almost said tier one then. Thank you very much for the Prime sub, my man. Six months, legend. Absolute legend. Um, yeah. What was I saying? Yeah. So, it, disc one basically gave you um what was almost like a demo, but it gave you half of the cars that the game offered. It gave you a good variety of cars. Um, a, a good variety of tracks and a good variety of wow it pretty much gave you free play I believe um, it didn't give you the actual missions because you couldn't do them all because you needed the second disc I believe that's what they did for this complete edition one is they just had that first disc um I'm not sure if there was a campaign in it or whether it had a modified campaign. That might have been the difference between the two. But uh, it was basically just a reduced amount of cars and stuff. Um, which is it, 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 a very weird way of doing it. Where they offer two different versions, but they offer a standard version and then a reduced version. I've seen a couple of games do it and I think it's a good idea actually. Because if they just put a shit ton of content in, let everyone have it, and then make a cheaper version for ones that don't want all the content, the bigger game doesn't have to go on sale as often. Yeah, literally half a game. I'm not even joking. Like, for, for the, the, the thing is, right, I think the reason why they did it as well is... Forza Motorsport 4 multiplayer isn't available on the disc 1 version. Yeah, I doubt it would have been, but... The thing is, I, th I think I know why they did it, is because the Xbox Arcade, basically the, the very first Xbox 360, only came with 4 gigabytes of onboard storage, which either Motorsport 3 and Motorsport 4, you wouldn't have been able to install any of the cards to it. So even though you can play Disc 1 and all the content that's on Disc 1 straight off the disc, you had to install Disc 2 to your console. Um, so I believe the reason why they did that is so that if you had that original Xbox, you could still play the game. You just had a smaller version of the game. Um, and it wasn't like, oh, well, tough shit, you can't play it. You need a better console kind of vibe. Which I, th I, th I think is a great idea. I think more games should do that. Um, if a console is... Wow. When you think about it, actually now we're in an era where games are big enough that and drives are big enough that we don't have problems with that. But like with the Steam Deck, I mean that's got a 64 gigabyte model. It would be cool to have smaller versions of games that don't take up as much space with less content. Just an idea. Especially as I've got 110 gigabytes already assigned on my Steam Deck to fucking, uh, what's it called? Assassin's Creed. Alright, we've got two more stints to go. Woohoo! Zim Zima, who got the keys to my motherfucking Beamer, bitch? I used to dream of this. I can't say the rest of the words because I'll get demonetized and cancelled and oh no. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for the drink, Kate. Don't even know if I have any. Yeah, I haven't got any left. I have no more drink. Do not redeem any more drink. <laughs> I, I, I will not be drinking anymore. <laughs> it's actually very difficult. My, my speakers died, by the way. So I've got no uh, audio at all from my PC. Which includes my game because they all go through the same system. Uh, so I've got no engine noise, I've got no stream music, i got no sound alerts, i got nothing at the moment. Oh, i got nothing. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> That was a sick corner. This is going to be really tough when it starts coming into, like, 
um, R1 class and R2. Maybe even R3 might be tough as well. There's going to be a lot of difficulty with some of these cars. The poor Simpos. Oh no. Well, the Simpos is under 4K now, which is awesome. Uh. So yeah, um, turns out as well, so I started playing like I've played Assassin's Creed for quite a while. I've played a bit of Syndicate. I've played a good chunk of Valhalla. Played a good chunk of Odyssey. Um, and a tiny bit of Origins. Played a bit of Assassin's Creed here and there. So I was like, right, when I get into PC, I sort of wanted to try it. It had been like two years since I played Odyssey. So I was like, right, I'm going to buy Odyssey. And I want to play through it because... It's 16 quid for the full thing with all the DLC. Um, and it comes with Assassin's Creed 3 as well. So if I choose to play that, there's another game there. Um, all for the low, low price of £16, which the bargain. Compared to the amount of hours I've got out of it, I've got five times my typical value. Like, I... Statistically, I will buy a game for the price it is the amount of hours I'll get so if a game's 30 hours I'll pay up to 30 pounds for it Assassin's Creed I've got 106 hours in it and I paid 16 quid fucking bargain in my eyes absolute bargain um but yeah it turns out I've actually started playing Assassin's Creed started with Odyssey which luckily enough is the first Assassin's Creed in the Assassin's Creed timeline. It's not the first Assassin's Creed game, but in terms of, like, you know, the years that they're based in, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the first Assassin's Creed. Um, it's, like, 400 years BC, so... And the next one is Origins, which is, like, 80 BC. So... The plan is to finish Origins, then move on to Odyssey, then Valhalla. Uh, sorry, finish on Origins, Odyssey, move on to Origins. I I'm getting myself confused. Plan is, <laughs> let's start again. Plan is, finish Odyssey, move on to Origins, then Valhalla, and then, um, wow. I I'm hoping that Mirage comes out early 2023. Because then I can slot that in before Valhalla. Because technically that's going to be before Valhalla. But I'm probably going to end up having to play Valhalla. And then play Mirage after that. But um. Yeah. I've, uh, honestly. It's, it's going to be fucking awesome. Like I've got a majority of the Assassin's Creed all bought already. Um. So yeah. Very excited. <laughs> Alright, off we go. Uh, I believe this is the last one, yeah, because it's the uh, Elise. So cool. The fact that we can get airtime on this is, is unreal. And even then, the airtime physics of this game are fairly decent. Simp By the way, if any of you are watching on YouTube, you can actually attack the Simp Boss if you press the uh, Super Thanks button down below the video. You can actually donate, help support the channel, um, which I think is an awesome feature that YouTube added. Um, so you can actually do Super Thanks now uh, and show your support, even if you're watching on YouTube. I know YouTube normally you could only support if someone was live streaming. Like, you could only donate to them if they were, you know, live. But uh, now you can actually support just by watching the video and pressing the super thanks button. 
which is crazy. So yeah. But you can also attack the simp boss over here on Twitch and on YouTube, which is mighty fine. Saving ghost. Nice. Very good, very nice. Alright, finish first in the tournament. Still can't believe Arachnix is still the simp boss. It's unreal. Alright, here we go. This is it. The final event of this, this championship and this episode. We've got to do this stint three times. This map is so cool. I keep raving about this. Like, I I always thought, oh yeah, Amalfi Coast is cool. But like, now that I've played this, played the full version, I, d I don't understand why this doesn't exist. Because compared to like, Test Track and Camino Vio Montserrat Extreme Circuit, neither of those were good long tracks. This was a really good long track. Like this one, this is awesome. This is the shit, as they say. The variety, the atmosphere, the views, it's just amazing. Alright, nice. Ta-da! Right, we got another race coming up. Two more, and then we're done. I'm tired. I need extra sleep tonight. do 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 na 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 Oh, a little bit of a tap there. A boss, a boss. Is there any critical strikes for the simp boss yet? Up the morning to your laddies.
Thank you for the posture check. Appreciate it. Oh, we're halfway there. Wow. Beamer on a pair. I don't know. <laughs> that was fucking terrible. All right. One more race. And then I can sleep. That's all YouTube needs to know. What Twitch needs to know, though, is I've got to do thumbnails as well. And then sleep. <laughs> Siege has got a really good start. We're in the interior camera. I don't know why, but I feel like the interior is actually pretty decent for this. The only thing is that I have a problem is the steering wheel. The animation is terrible. Straight up terrible. No excuse for it. There's never been an excuse for it and there never will be. Ooh, the technology wasn't good enough still. Oh, that's nice. Smooth operator. Smooth operator. All right, no bad. There we go. Saving the ghost. That was a good one. Yeah, good stream today as well. <sighs> I gotta go to sleep. Apologies to anyone that I've just made yawn. But at least we know you're paying attention. <laughs> Very nice. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.